Hello, this is a video on creating a new project in EpiInfo. Um, if you are watching this, hopefully you've already downloaded the program. Yay, good start! So that will mean that you'll either see an EpiInfo icon on your computer that looks like this, or you can go down to your start menu and you can see it. Here it is in my start menu, EpiInfo. If I didn't see it in either place, I could also go down to this area and type it in and I'll see in my menu, oh, there it is, an icon popping up. So I'm going to go ahead and click on any of those options I could have clicked here. And you'll see this nice little blue menu pop up. So I have some kind of a survey. Maybe I just went into a classroom and did a presentation, and I want to create a database to enter those surveys. So to start a new project, I'm going to click right here where it says Create Forms. This screen will pop up. It may take a second or two depending on how uh, quickly the program is read. And you're going to have to go up into the top left corner where it says New Project. And you're going to go ahead and click on that. First thing I'm going to have to do is save a name for it. So we'll call it New Project. This right here is the path that I've highlighted where that's going to be saved. We've discovered that there's kind of some quirks to the program if you're trying to save in other locations. So we really recommend that whatever this starting path is, you just look at it and remember it. So I can see it's my C drive, users, events, you know, and that's where it's going to be saved. And then you move the file later if you want it in a different location. I could give a short description. Um, this is my new project for outreach presentations. Um, we'll leave it in an access and now I have to give it a form name. So maybe I'll say new form underscore one. So if I try to save it with that form name, oh no, I have this little box pop up and you can read from it, it says form names cannot contain spaces or non-alphanumeric characters. So you can see that I have a space, I have an underscore, and I have a one. So those things aren't going to be okay. Um, so instead we'll just call it new form and then that should be accepted. It may take a second for the program to load, to load. that's pretty normal. Um, and then you're going to see something pop up like this on your screen. When I start, I'm going to recommend that you start with a title. So I'm going to take my mouse and I'm going to right click. When I right click, I'm going to see this menu pop up and I'm going to go to new field. This is what will always allow me to create something new on my database form. I'm going to start with a label or title. So I'm going to say new project form is what I'm calling it. I'm going to hit tab on my computer down to here or I can just click in this case I chose to click and you can see that um, a field name came up. So this field name is really important. It will come up anytime you're creating a new project um, and it's something that I recommend being really short and really clear that if you had a drop down menu of you know 25 different fields you would know what this is referring to. So in this case I'm actually just going to call it title. If I want to change the font pretty self-explanatory I can go into here I can make it a different um, font I can make it bold well we'll leave it regular and make it a lot bigger because it's going to be my title. So maybe we'll go with this one. Okay. And hit OK. That looks good. So I've got my new project form. So this is where you're going to be adding new fields. Um, you know, maybe the first thing I want is the date. Um, so that's my question or prompt that I'll see. Um, if you see something red pop up like here, it's saying that you can't choose that word because the program already uses it for something special. So I'll just call it date one. It's no longer red. I know that I'm good to go. Um, if I wanted to change the prompt font, I could go in here and do that again. Maybe I want this to be bold as well. And I'm going to click OK. And there we go. I've got a date entry. If I want to move this date entry, it might be a little hard. If I click on just the box, I move just the box. But now, if I want to move them both, they'll travel together. So you can see that. So what I recommend is you move that box, say I want it to the left, you can resize it by clicking on that button right there to whatever size you want. And then when you move them together, 
to always click on the actual word or question or prompt. So we'll put that date up here. I'm not going to add too much, but maybe I'll add um, a number. So number of students. Again, you can see that when I hit tab on my computer or click there, that automatically popped up. Number of students is kind of long, but it works for me. And, you know, maybe this is going to be something required. So when people enter data into my database, they can't skip this. They've got to give me the number of students or I'm not going to let them continue on. I don't think I need to change my font. I'll click OK. So there is my number of students. Again, remembering that I clicked on just the um, characters of the question or prompt to move them. And if I want the box to the left, I can do that here. Again, maybe I want to make that smaller or bigger. Um, we'll add one more field. It's common that we might want a drop down. So if you're doing a drop down, so it's like you can select from five different things, you might go down, you're going to go down to legal values. You're going to click on legal values and I might say school. Say I'm in a certain school district and I know that I'm really only going to four or five schools. School works is a good field name for me. Here's the tricky part. I, under data source, am going to want to scroll to the right to this little button with the three dots. You'll remember when we started that that three dots button showed us um, how to search for something. I'm going to go to create new and now I'm going to enter my school. So maybe I have um, elementary school, middle school, high school. Those might be the three that I'm doing. So those will be the three options. Um, if I click do not sort, it means that it's going to pop up in this order. If I don't select this, it's going to come out alphabetically. I think I kind of like it like this. So we'll do it like that. We'll click OK. Again, the program is telling me that I'm good if I can select OK. I'll do that here. And I can move this over. And you'll see I've got a nice little drop down menu. I like to click on the arrow to double check. Did I get all three? Looks like I did. So you can keep entering as much as you want. Um, but you'll notice that by doing kind of this, it sort of makes the form look a little weird, like when things aren't lined up. A nice way to get them arranged, I'm going to hold down the left side of my mouse and drag a box around these three items. And you'll see that when I let go of the mouse, all three of them are highlighted. I'm going to right click and I can have all of these options down here to align in one column, align in two columns, three columns. I actually want to align them maybe in one column. So look, okay, cool. All of a sudden it came in one column. Unfortunately, it took my box and moved it back down. If I don't want that to go back, I can go to my keyboard and go control Z, Z, Z and it'll take me back. Or if I want to go back, I can do control Y, Y, Y. So we'll try that one more time. I'm holding down my mouse, scrolling around. I'm going to right click. And this time, let's say I want them in one row. Oh, wow, look, now they've popped up this way. So that looks good for me. You could always enter more. And um, if I wanted to go ahead and just save this from where I'm at, I'm going to do a control S on my computer. I could go up into edit save or file save. Actually, that's not even an option. So it, the program will automatically save, which feels a little scary. But that is a nice part. You're never going to really lose your data here. So I'll just select out. Closing project. So that is how to start and create a new project in Epi Info 7.